So, we have the exact same problem as last time, which is that Mad Lions occupy most of the spots. <laughs> I just want to say, they wouldn't if... <laughs> if we kept the same system as before. So obviously, loads of people have been saying this is the worst all pro ever. Um, I want to go on record and say that overall, there are some aspects where this is the most accurate. Like, I think support and ADC is very accurately represented. I think as a top three, these both work. I think, I think, for me, the problem with mid is Nuck being there and Larson not. Um... And then when it comes to jungle, I, th I think this is the top three, by the way. So, for me, the only big issue is top lane, really. Um, if you're looking at it broadly. In terms of a first all-pro team, I could understand the complaints. But I think most of this represents the top three quite well. Chasey is on there because people have no idea how to look at top lane. Because Caps plays the game better than seven other people in the mid lane. I mean, Larson absolutely should be up here. Larson absolutely should be up here. Um... I think it's a crime Larson isn't here. People were telling me that other analysts weren't even, like, considering Larson when they were talking about mid lane for their personal lists. I find that insane. The vote he got was from Mad Lions in third. Um, I think if you look at the performances of mid overall and the breadth of decisions that they had to make in-game, it's almost unquestionable that Larson was playing at the highest level for the longest time. I think that's just fucking unquestionable, by the way. Uh, and I think the arguments people would have to give would have to be really general stuff, like that we didn't get to see him play in BO5s anyway. And that's like fine, but we're not rating based off what we didn't see. We're rating off what we did see, and we did see the decisions required to be on that level anyway, even if we didn't see him play on that level. I think the top three, though, for most, like, for, for three of the roles, I wouldn't change the three people there. I would just change the order, right? So, like, all right, so what do we have here? So we have, like, so this is what the LEC have, okay? I don't know why I keep calling it ADC, but whatever. So the LEC have... Chasey, Adam... Photon. They have... Elgoya, Shio, Yike. Dude, the recency bias is insane, by the way. They have Nisky Capsnuck. They have Crowny Kazi hands. Man, no analyst had these guys as their top three, did they? <laughs> this is the real source of hate. It's because everyone would have to tacitly agree that that's the top three, so he must hate it. That's the real source. 
Unironically, I see way more people defending top lane than any anything else here. Which is mental to me, but... And then we have Hickey, Hickey, Hill, Hickey, holy shit, Hillisang, Mickey X, and Lavrov, right? That's what they've got. Just to illustrate why I think like it's not like that hateful of a list, the guys I wouldn't have would be like I wouldn't have Nuck. Let me think. Wait, let me let me let me bring up top lane. Oh, irrelevant had an insane split. I'd probably have Photon Irrelevant and maybe Odo. I'd probably have those three. So, it would be like... That's it. Those are the only actual people I would eliminate. And then everybody else... I would rearrange them. And that would be it. So, the, the list is actually... I feel like this is one of the better lists they've had. Unless you're only looking at the first place. Right? So... So the list is like 80% accurate, right? They, I, I feel like 12 out of 15 are justified. So the list is like 80% accuracy. Yes, Cap's really off the disc split. Like, I'm sorry, but who else, by the way? You can make an argument for humanoid, maybe. Like, I would actually accept that I could see you disregarding this and throwing humanoid in instead. I can see people saying leader, and I want to put leader there, but it's very notable how and why they bombed out. Right? And it's because his champ- he has champ pool issues up the fucking arse in a way no one else has. And he still has those issues. And you have to be valuing that. Because I agree, Leader is the reason Australis are where they are. He's the reason they are where they are both ways though. He's the reason they got that far. And he's a limiting factor in why they didn't get further. Right? I think Niski remains one of the most useful mid laners in Europe. Considering he has basically the Doin Beast setup, which necessitates strong jungle mid, right? So like I'm I I I I would gladly get okay, so how about we say it's like 73 to 80 percent accurate you know i'll give you that one right i'll give you that like that being said i also expect this to change i'm pretty sure caps at worlds is going to prove to me that he's top two by the way like i anticipate for my tier list for summer that i'll end up having caps top two but maybe i'm wrong and he just runs it yeah so the list is 73 to 80% accurate. I think that's a lot better than people are giving it credit for. People people are acting like it's the doom of Valyria in esports. The real doom of Valyria in esports is the fact that Elon Musk is about to purge accounts that are three years old. Um, so uh, I'm waiting to drop to being like a 2k followed person, but let's find out. I think, I think the really egregious parts of the list is when we look at the results and we find stuff like this, right? Like this guy for me was the best. 
he gets one vote, basically. Right? He gets one vote. I think the full thing's here, right? There he is. So voting breakdown, Oscar winning on one point, Ray Razork on one point! One on three on two and Razork on one, okay. Larson on seven. I don't know who comp killed, but I will say everyone above him is better than him right now, so I'm fine with that. Kobe below upset is so weird to me. Missed by one, that's funny as fuck. Uh, but this ultimately I would agree with. Right, I'd ultimately agree with this. Uh, Trimby 2, Advian 1, don't tell. Don't tell Koi that. Don't tell Koi that. By, by, by points here, Koi just gave up a support twice as good as the support they got for him. Don't tell Koi that. Why does this look like an all-pro for playoffs only? Recency bias. Okay? Recency bias. Recency bias, recency bias, recency bias. Alright? When you when you when you make them account for playoffs, you might as well say you're only accounting for playoffs now. You should you should have expected that. I'm gonna be honest with you. Because what was happening in regular? In regular split, the team that was at the top in week seven, week eight, that team got the whole all pro monopoly. Right? You sh I, I don't know why people thought that if you included playoffs, that the same effect wouldn't happen, right? The same effect would obviously happen. Recency virus, recency virus, recency virus. I mean, on it. Okay, I just want to remind. Okay, look, Oscar Rinin, Razork, fuck, Advian, Reckless didn't even get a vote, and Humanoid. All of these guys would be on the first All-Pro team if they hit the Nexus one more time. To, to demonstrate the absurdity of, 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 of the top part of the list, that is true, okay? They hit the Nexus one more time and, and it's, it's a banger. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a completely different route to you guys. I think the mistake was going for the end at all, by the way. I think on one reset they just win the game, but whatever. And if upset wouldn't be a fraud, all Vitality players would be at the top. True. Okay, there's a much longer road for Mad Lions to be at the top. I am glad on one thing though, the bow delusion hasn't completely penetrated the planet, alright? The bow delusion is just the proprietary property of extremely delusional analysts who cannot admit that they were completely giga wrong, okay? It's fine. The bow, the bow delusion has not infected the entirety of the LEC, the entirety of the player base, the entirety of the pundit community. We have contained the infection, alright? And I'm glad about that. I'm also glad Photon didn't get completely punished. I was expecting this, even though I just think it's straight wrong. And I think he got credit that Oyoya should get. But can I really complain when Oyoya is getting this much credit? I think Oyoya absolutely overall was the best jungler, so I'm fine with this. So, spoiler, but I'm I'm putting him first as well. There are actually two players on the first All-Pro that I'd put first. So, 40% of the first All-Pro is actually, like, correct in my opinion, right? Like, honestly... Like, I'm not going to give you my top three, because if I give you my top three, then it spoils too much of the tier list that I'll be doing, okay? But I will give you my first All-Pro, right? And I'll give you my MVP. Ah, 
I was figuring how I was going to write this out, but I'll just do it this way. So people are going to hate on this, but I think most of the hate Photon is getting for that series is hate that Bo should receive. Because I think that what happened was that El Yoy and Shio are just far better at playing to topside. Or playing... I, should, I shouldn't say play to topside. It's more accurate to say that they're better at playing a complete map. In El Yoya's specific thing, it's definitely more about playing to topside. Um, in Shio's, it's more about playing the entirety of the map. Uh, that sounds like it should be the opposite of true, because obviously Adam is more of the player that you'd want to play hard around. But it became very clear at a point that El Yoyo was abusing the same thing he abused Inspired for to make the comeback happen um, against Rogue years ago, right? The same system was in play again, and the same way that Armut ended up getting hyped through the fucking roof then... How many of you guys remember, by the way, that Armut got hyped through the fucking roof after that BO5? People were saying that it was literally Armut diff against Oda Wamne was how they won that. How many of you guys remember that? Because I remember that fucking delusion, and we are back there again. You guys will talk about Chasey like you talk about Armut within two splits max. You will, you will, I guarantee you, there are people watching me right now, okay? Who genuinely think I'm delusional about Chasey. Catch yourself in a few months when you talk about Chasey like you talk about Armour. Because you've done it before. I've seen this many times at this point. The exact same systemic thing happening on the map many times. It's happening with Chasey. It happened with Armour. Alright? Like, I, I will just wait at this point. Because I've had these arguments before now. I will just fucking wait at this point. Because it will happen, and you guys will never bring it up again. Like, you never bring up Hirit either, right? You guys just never bring this shit up again. So I'm glad to wait. Photon was consistently by far the best top laner over the course of the split. Oda Wamne didn't have anywhere near as many games as Photon. But that's not why I'm giving him the hit, because you guys know I'm a big Odo fanboy. I'm giving him the hit because even in the games that we saw, there are two games that definitely come to mind where he... It felt to me like he felt he had to do something to get his team back on track. And you could argue that if the team was doing better, he wouldn't feel those things. But those instances he did were game-losing moments for his team, right? And there are two games in particular that come to my mind for that. And that's why I give Odo Omne the hit. Photon never had those instances. Photon just had, like, impossible decisions. And when he had those, he always took the... Um, the one that gave him the most opportunity to impact the map in those decisions. Um, we actually went over some of these games the other day because somebody was telling me that um, they played, they never played to bot, that Vitality never played to bot in their final 2BO5s, but it was the complete opposite of true, right? And you'd very often see these photon shifts to mid to back up a four-man play on bot. You would even see him extend to a straight bot side play, kind of like Finn does in Champions Q. Um, he very much understood how to play for the main objectives his team wanted to play for and how to play against the deficit he had, no matter what kind of champion he was with. This was true of him being on Mumble Action, etc. And it's true of him, you know, being on like a tank and stuff. And this is the stuff that impressed us about Photon in Winter. Um, how he played the map as Jax, rather than, you know, just some individual mechanical thing, right? Because um, there are times where individually mechanically he'll fuck up, but there, there's never a game-losing decision play that he makes. Um, and this could also be surprising because he's Korean, and a lot of you guys think I just hate all Koreans. Um, but Photon was genuinely good. and But I still do believe Melanix should get a look-in before you import a top laner, right? Or a city should get a look-in before you import a top laner, right? Like, there are... There are top lane talents. There are top lane talents, okay? In Europe. But Photon is ultimately, in my opinion, the best top laner currently playing in the LEC, right? Um, jungle is the easiest thing in the world. Utter Beast. 
Um, there's not much I can say about Oyoe that I haven't already said 500 million times over. Um, he plays jungle the way I think jungle should be played. Um, i.e. he understands how to fix one side before making hard play on the other. He makes very specific, not very, not very specific, very targeted calls based on tempo changes on the map like that. Um, he now doesn't just clearly demonstrate an understand of it, an understanding of it, but he also clearly demonstrates the experience of a veteran professional um, in how fast he makes these decisions now. Um, and the difference between him and Razork continues to be, for me, that um, in El Yoya's case, he's clearly earned his team's trust on that playstyle. And the more footage I see of El Yoya talking to his teammates, the more I understand why. This guy is a leadership figure that has stepped up since Humanoid has left, right? Um, and the level of control he's been able to get really shows in his gameplay. Um... Everything else I've stated way too many times. Even this I've probably stated too many times. Um, but there's a reason this guy always ends up appearing in my top two, top three anyway. Um, and the next jungler who's likely to do that is going to be Yike. Um, but oh, Yoya is the reason that they are the champions. He is straight up the reason they are the champions. It's not even close. And he's kind of humble about it. Because if I was him... I would turn on that stream and instead of, you know, staring at Adam taking his pet rock for a walk and be like, wow, it's all top diff. You guys should all go and vote Chasey, blah, blah, blah. I would have turned on the stream and be like, I am the fucking greatest to ever do it. Fuck everyone else, blah, blah, blah. If I was outputting performances on the level this guy does year after year in the worst conditions. Because believe me, when you are stuck at like 8th place or some shit like that, and you're clearly pissed, it can be so easy to lose your goddamn mind. So there are loads of reasons I like this guy right now that don't just have to do with his in-game shit. Um... But he's demonstrated far more as a result than any other jungler has. Um, he'll probably... I, if he doesn't stay like this for summer, I'll be amazed. Um, and honestly, I was really tempted to put him up like this, even when it looked like they weren't going to make it to the group stage. Let alone the finals, by the way. Um, okay, there are a couple of games going on in Champions Q right now. Oh, a city is playing, but right now none of them involve a T1 player, so we'll wait until that. Um, okay. So mid's gonna be my really controversial one compared to the rest. I think you guys know because I've been super vocal about it. And I think I've already stated, right? <laughs> like, it's probably easiest if I go down the list of things that these guys haven't demonstrated that Larson has. Okay? I think you have a champion of like three things. And I think you're very useful on all of them, but a lot of that usefulness happens after the map itself has been won by jungle support and whereas the best times that you are able to cheat your wave solo and defend one side while jungle support makes play on the other while those are really impressive and are technically all on you if you can't be on a champion that can cheat it or aren't in a setup that can cheat it you don't demonstrate the laning prowess of of Caps, Humanoid, Larson, Leader, any of these guys, right? And that lack of demonstration of laning prowess and dependency on this kind of utility mid that has really easy, clear access into very obvious usefulness on these plays outside of economy, outside of being a lane bully, that matters. You're good at your all-in opportunities, but you're not good at finding all-in opportunities on champions that require minute decision-making at every single individual point, which sucks because you used to be an Irelia player. So, But that was also an issue when you played Irelia years and years and years ago, I do remember. And it's ever since you've gone into this Doinby-esque phase that you've been like this. To be clear, to be clear, I had Niski as like second or third 
pre-split. And I would still have him top three now. Because everything he does do, I think is extremely useful. And I, I can bet on him every year. Um, and he's one of my favourite mids for sure. But, everything he doesn't demonstrate, Larson does. Alright? You, run it. <laughs> like, Caps will have some crazy misjudgments, right? Um, that Larson will just never have. And I think the moment I said that, all of you had at least one kind of misjudgment that came to mind, right? You have a champ pool of, like, three champs similar to Niski, but unlike Niski, none of yours are going to be useful in every situation, and you don't demonstrate the level of map awareness that Niski does. I think if this guy's on Azir Casio, I think he's a force, for sure, but that's about it, and he can be targeted really easily. Um, speaking of being targeted really, really easily, um, Leader is both the reason Astralis did so well and the reason they couldn't do any better. And I'm not going to give him a free pass. As much as I love and have hyped the guy for years and years and years, I'm not going to give him a free pass on that. It would be wrong to do so. Um, because it, it demonstrably makes him much worse than Larson, who also had a very narrow pool beforehand, but did take efforts years ago to start expanding it, right? Introducing the Echo more often, into the Akali more often, into he can definitely play Assassins as well as Mages at this point, right? Um, Humanoid would actually be the closest still, in my opinion, to um, taking on Larson, unless Caps, like, demonstrates a significant amount more at Worlds. Um, but at the same time, he has that lack of synergy with his jungler, um, and that's despite him having a clear leadership role in the game. Uh, that means a lot of their plays seem quite off by, like, a couple of seconds each in execution. Whereas Niski never, uh, Niski doesn't have that problem, and Larson doesn't even need that problem. Larson basically doesn't have a jungler to work with a lot, um, but he understands the decisions that he can make to keep his team in a consistent state without having to all in on acceleration all the time. And it feels like Humanoid thinks he has to all in on acceleration to do that, but Larson understands when he doesn't have to. I, I don't have to explain with perks, surely. Uh, Larson pretty much plays the same as Larson, so yeah. That would be that that would be my arguments for Larson. Um for ADC. I think I think I think I'd I think I would end up voting Crowny. I won't tell you. The guys that I'm deciding between, you'll have to wait for my fucking tier list for that. Um, Crowny is by far the most improved AD carry. He is the first AD carry in years that I can definitively say is going to be taking on Hans Sammer. Neon could have been that guy, but didn't reach that point. Crowny has reached that point. Crowny is that guy, and Crowny's only going to get better, right? Cranny might be an egotistical fuck who rages at his Champions Q support too much, but he's clearly as critical on himself. And I think his attitude is very, very good for self-improvement, even if it might make all of his support slides hell. Um, and that improvement has come out in force. And I expect in summer that he's going to make a bold case for himself to be the outright best for sure. And I think in the playoffs, and I would be voting for this at the end of the playoffs, I'd have to give it to him for the improvement, because right now, the worst thing I can say about him is that he is at least competing with Hans Sammer, who obviously I think does everything Crowny has started to do, um, but on a far more consistent basis more often, right? For me, the most impressive ADC game I've seen has not been any of these early pentacles, but has been Hans Sammer's Lucian game game four against um mad lions that was the most impressive adc game i saw um but i'd have to give it to crowny anyway uh for sure 
And, like, obviously just having a higher peak in one game doesn't make you better overall, right? Like, that's not... That's not true either. Um, this one might surprise people. Um... If only because I just don't see people, like, bring it up. But for, for me, it has to be Mickey. Like... Like, it, it, yeah, like, I think he is the only choice. So, I, I, I still ultimately agree with the top three they have. I think, I think BDS won games because of bot lane and jungle. Right? That's my opinion. They won games because of bot lane and jungle. And Lavrov was a big part of that. Um, I think Lavrov didn't work so well with Kazi because Kazi will go in. And Lavrov, if he doesn't know for sure that they're about to go in will go out, but Crowny is like a dictator <laughs> in lane. You know what I was almost about to say. So that issue doesn't really exist for Lavrov anymore. Um, and off of these really strong 2v2s that they're doing, Lavrov understands how to play the map with pick champions better than most people do. Um, we haven't really seen him play much of what I believe is his best champion. People think it's fresh. It's actually Alistair. This guy is the best Alistair I've seen um, on the EU West at least. Um, but Mickey X is really good at everything. <laughs> um, so whereas I have to be specific talking about Lavrov, I don't when it comes to Mickey X. And Hillisang is benefiting from the fact that his ADC always recognizes strong all-in opportunities. So when Hilly goes for good all-in opportunity, his ADC does. And his ADC benefits from the fact that Hilly will always go in anyway. And so doesn't have that mismatch that he has with Lavrov, right? So... Um, but for me, those times where Kazi isn't going in, Kazi's correct not to go in, and when Hilly keeps going in, it's still in. People seem to have forgotten that Hilly has just straight thrown their lane multiple times this split, and last split especially. Um, well, obviously we're talking about this split. Uh, and if Hilly isn't on a heavy Olympic champ, kind of similar to Lavrov, right? Uh, then his usefulness is very, uh, whereas Mickey X is, is basically faker, um, when it comes to the breadth of champions he can play. Um, he's opened his team up to being able to play center lanes, which is going to be huge when you get to the long range Jinx meta that we're seeing at the highest level. He can play enchanters, which really matters when you get into the hyper carries that we're seeing play bot at the highest level. He's really good at it all. He doesn't just have to play all the engaged champs or pick champs to look like the best, and he's still insane at those. And his map understanding is still one of the highest in the league. I think Hillisang's map understanding would be second highest, and then Lavrov uh, would be looking at third there, right? Um, so I think it's like unquestionable Mickey X is the best right now. Um, Targamas is the only guy that I've seen demonstrate a better map understanding than Mickey X in certain situations, but he isn't even in the league this split, and he clearly gave up on League of Legends last split, like halfway through, so whatever. Yeah, it's not doing about that. So for me, it's Mickey, which leaves MVP, right? And for anyone who doesn't know how I roll, um, the most valuable player is not the best player in their role. It is the player that gave the team the most value. So Niski has been a clear MVP that I've given before. Like while he was on Fnatic, I thought he was MVP, even though I didn't think he was the best mid in the league, right? Um, a really good example, I don't know if, if any of you even watch NLC, um, but if you watch NLC, you know that my all pro votes for NLC had Niter as the best mid, was it Nitro or Fury is the best mid? One of those two was the best mid, but I had Fire Rain as the MVP because I thought he gave the most value to his team of anyone, even if it wasn't necessarily by playing mid perfectly, right? And in that sense, I think there's only one clear, undoubted, inarguable MVP for people who aren't completely delusional and just inhale propaganda, right? And that's Leader. 
I think if you think any single player gave more value to their team than Leader did, you are trolling. You are trolling out your ass. You are fucking hard trolling. This guy took one of the worst, most giga inting lineups and pretty much solo carried it in comms and in mid lane to a respectable position where people were legitimately questioning if Australis would go to MSI, right? Did he end up being a limiting factor at the same time with having to go Silas into Annie every fucking game and shit like this? Yes, he did. Does he have massive champ pool issues? Yes, he did. But I'm not rating how good this guy is at mid. I'm rating the value he gave to his team relative to everybody else on that team. And if I do that, Leader is by far the best at giving value to his team Real value, not carrying a loss value. I mean carrying his garbage team to a position where they look like the second best team in the fucking league at one point, right? And Mad Lions didn't look like the best at that point either, right? So, this was nuts. The solo carrying that he did. And if anyone who's watched Champions Q, for example, when Leader was playing it in Europe, um, knows what a state this guy had in comms. And there are macro things Australis do that other teams just do not do. Like the way that they play strong side and the way that they shift is something other teams can learn from, right? That other teams should look at the VODs and learn from. There are two teams that brought something macro-wise that was very unique that you should learn from. And none of those teams are G2 Mad Lions Fanatic. They are BDS and Australis. Those are the two guys giving really fucking good macro concepts that maybe we'll go over in a different stream, actually. That would actually be something good to go over um, in the off-season, for sure. Um, that other big teams can learn from, right? Australis brought such new stuff in terms of how they shifted the map. Um... And that was leader, because I've literally seen this guy shot call it. I've literally seen it. And he also gave the priorities in game that even allowed these things to happen in the first place, right? So for all the limitations that he has as a mid laner, as a member of the team, he's the fucking MVP of the split. He's just the straight fucking MVP of the split. And you're fucking trolling if you say Yankos, you're trolling if you say El Yoya, less, bit less trolling if you say El Yoya, but you're fucking trolling if you say anyone else. Hey, Yankos wasn't even the most valuable course, jungler. Man. It, like, Yankos wasn't even the most valuable jungler. Man, all right? I love Yankos, <laughs> but he wasn't base. even the most valuable jungler. All right, Eriko, thank you so much for the 19 months in the army. Anyway, that would be my first all pro. That would be my MVP. Coach of the split doesn't fucking matter because we cannot rate the coaches. Coach of the split is El Yoya, okay? Coach of the split is fucking El Yoya. There you go. Job done. Or leader. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> Alright? But yeah.